Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to a more or less completely pointless video, but a fun one at that because Audi UK have supplied me with this stunning 105,000 pound Audi S8 for the week. And with this being the sort of largest of the saloon variant cars that Audi do, minus the long wheelbase of this, I thought it'd be quite nice to put it up against my 760 Li, as they're sort of the same thing with this being the flagship in terms of the power plant with that four litre twin turbo V8 and this having the naturally aspirated six litre V12 from 2007. So let's have a little play around with the cars. I'm gonna jump in the back of both of them and sort of show you what there is. And then we'll take them both for a drive and see how they compare in terms of that. But what I really wanna get out here is that for 20 times the money, what are you getting with this Audi S8 as opposed to my old, admittedly, very well priced at five grand, seven series. Now, of course, this is a 2007 car and this is 2021. So obviously it commands a premium because of that, but it will be interesting nonetheless to put the two up against each other and just have a bit of fun. Despite the extra weight though, the performance specs of the Audi are of course far, far more favorable than my old seven series. This with its naturally aspirated six liter V12. So I can't believe it has a V12, that is nuts. It produces around 440 horsepower and about the same amount of pounds feet in torque. Now this thing with its four liter twin turbo V8 produces 563 brake horsepower and 590 pounds feet of torque. In fact, Audi quote this has been able to do naught to 60 in about 3.8 seconds. However, from some articles and reviews that I've read, in real world, it's much, much closer to three dead. Some journalists have even recorded 3.2s. This, you'd struggle to get under five and a half because of that pretty, pretty lethargic gearbox. Whereas this obviously has the latest in the eight speed gearboxes that go into these Audis. Welcome into the back of the Audi S8 then, where you're greeted immediately by this gorgeous brown quilted leather interior and these carbon fiber backed seats. Unfortunately though, that's where the fun really stops for this Audi S8 in the back. There's a severe lack of gadgets in here. There's a reason for that though. This Audi S8 is not a long wheelbase. They don't make a long wheelbase S8. They do make a long wheelbase, but not with this engine variant. So essentially, this is a great competitor in terms of power plant for my V12 7 series. But strictly speaking, this is not like a limo variant which is a shame because like I say, it means there's a severe lack of toys in here. And by that, I mean, there's literally none. Unfortunately, these seats are not adjustable. Uh, we do have a central area here, which you can pull down. There we go, like so. However, nothing in here. And we just have some cup holders on the end, similar to the seven series in design that actually. But apart from that, there is no toys which is an utter shame. We have electric windows, but no blinds. There's a couple of 12 volts in here and the very fancy air vent controls. But yes, unfortunately, no toys in the back. Whereas in the 7 Series, it's a very different story. One thing it does have, like the 7 Series though, is a very, very strokeable headlining. Very strokeable, that's lovely. Mm. And so in the 7 Series, it is an entirely different story. I have individual air conditioning units ahead of me. I've got a mirror there. I've got my lovely headlining, and actually, this is softer. And then the sort of party pieces, all of these seat controls in the middle here, heated seats, cool seats on the rear. A fridge, which, ooh, hmm, hmm, Chardonnay. It's 11 o'clock, so that's probably early enough, isn't it? And yeah, this little compartment here for your champagne flutes, blinds, which I can control each side as I wish, and a TV as well, don't let me forget. Uh, and I have to say genuinely, these seats are probably as comfortable, if not more so, than those beautiful, gorgeous, quilted uh, ones in the Audi. I have to say that interior is, is stunning. And actually I feel a bit sick now, jumping into this beige fest. It's uh, it's quite something. Having said that, it's when you sort of jump in the front of the cars and take them for a drive that that Audi really shines. The technology, the modern technology on the car is sublime. And so I should really show that off because it's only fair and actually their power plant in their car. Oh my goodness, 
it's a masterpiece. It, it really is. But yeah, obviously the 7 Series sort of wins in terms of the gadgets in the back, but this is a long wheelbase designed for the rear passenger. So it's not surprising really that that non-long wheel, wheelbase variant uh, doesn't have all the toys. Where's that bottle of wine though? Because I might just, uh, hmm. Okay, so I thought before I quickly take the cars out, I'd give them a little bit of a, a rev off just to see what they're like. I've just dragged my dad away from his desk to help me out here. You have heard them both, haven't you? I have, And yes. you like this, don't you? I do, actually. I think it's got a, it's got a real purr to it, but there's mm. a little bit of menace underneath the purr. What do you mean by that? Well, it's just it's a little bit of a hint of a growl. It's an Audi growl, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, though, because you can hear it's quite restricted. Yeah, sure. But I would like yeah. to see what it sounds like on camera. Okay. Uh, which one do you want to rev? Uh, oh, actually, let me rev the Audi because I've not done that one before. Okay, rev the Audi. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Cool. Okay, so from my perspective, that's pretty much a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was the lion and the lamb, wasn't it? It's unfair, though, because this is obviously modified, and this is not. This is stock. You can, it does have like a valve system, I think, where you put it in individual or dynamic, and it's a bit louder okay. than comfort. Okay. But yeah, yeah obviously, yeah. this has a red line restriction, so you can't rev yeah, it all it the way. Yeah, it wouldn't let, I was putting my foot right down, it wouldn't yeah, it go any further. Yeah, it limits it, whereas yeah, that yeah. doesn't. That, I haven't done that in quite a while, and it seems to have wet itself. Oh, yes. Mm, so <laughs> got very excited but yeah at least from where i'm standing slash sitting yeah. that's i mean three oh, yeah. four times as loud oh easily and also yeah because you couldn't rev it out with that one it just was and that was all it yeah. you know just a bit of a buzz yeah. you know i mean to be honest i think this one sounds better on the road doesn't it um like when you're on the road and it does have a nice sound and you get the little burble farts and stuff you know yeah, yeah. that's nice but yeah just revving it stationary night and day isn't it doesn't really do much does it Cool. Well, thanks. You can go back to work now. Thank I'm going to go much. and take the cars out for a little bit of drive. Okay. Well, do the fun both, stuff without you. Both at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm good Amazing. like that. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, these YouTube skills I'm learning. Yeah, nice. No, very, very, very cool. Right. Off you go. See you later. Bye. Right. Now let's go for a drive. We'll take this one first and then I think we'll jump in the, the seven. Let me be honest there's going to be no contest between the sort of driving dynamics of these cars, such as with the noise of these cars, not really any contest. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. Let's go out in this. Thanks to dad for helping me with that. And yeah, let's see what the S8 is like on the road. So then everyone, welcome into the Audi S8. And the first thing you notice when you step inside is how deftly quiet it is. I mean, it's literally the same sort of noise levels that I get when I tell a joke with my friends, completely silent. But this is the over 100,000 pound car aforementioned in the title of this video that we're sort of comparing to my seven series today because essentially they are the same category of car, although not quite, and we'll go into that a little bit more through this video. So immediately, I must say, the interior of this car is stunning. It's beautiful to look at. These seats are probably the most comfortable seats I've ever had the pleasure of sitting in. And everything is laid out pretty, pretty easily. It's actually quite minimalistic. And one of the main reasons for that is that everything is sort of on these screens. Now, first and foremost, the thing I really don't like about these screens is how dirty they get. You can see the fingerprints all over them and especially when they're off, it's even worse. There is a screen cleaning mode, however, and Audi does provide a screen cleaning cleaning kit. So this is obviously an issue that they're aware of and you can clean it. But it's a little bit annoying and I miss having actual buttons for things like selecting radio stations or even just adjusting the temperature 
in the car. I like physical buttons, and physical buttons is what my 7 Series has, which I much prefer. But in terms of functionality, this is obviously much more up to date, 2021. So we have a heads up display, which is a big, big thumbs up from me. Really, really nice. I think every car should have one of those. And Apple CarPlay, for me, a really, really important thing. You plug your phone in, you've got your Waze, your Google Maps, whatever it is that you like to use for navigation. And of course, literally a direct app to your Spotify or whatever it is you use to listen to music. Superbly, superbly convenient and easy. Whereas when I get my 7 Series, I have to sort of link up this AUX dongle. I have to make sure that's charged. And then I have to connect my Bluetooth to the phone. It's a bit of a faff. So you get in this, you plug your phone in, and you don't have to worry about anything else. It can all be controlled from the Apple CarPlay system in here. Now, another issue with having all of these screens is that when you're driving along, it is quite tricky to fiddle with stuff. This is all haptic touch. So you actually have to press quite hard to get a response from the screen, a bit harder than I'd like. And obviously when you're trying to drive along, you're faffing about with this and it's hard to know exactly where things are because buttons sort of feel like something in a car and sort of you can remember where a button is and press it and not have to look whereas in this you really do have to look at what you're pressing which means when you're driving along it's a little bit tricky now unfortunately this car is missing some pretty basic things i'd say for a car of this value such as cooled seats it doesn't have cooled seats we have heated seats here but no cooled seats and no massage function, which I think is a shame. But like I say, where this car really stands out is when you drive it. So why don't I shut up? I'll switch the car on now and we'll go for a little blast. So with this thing being the latest in Audi technology, we've got a ton of cameras. We've even got this really quirky 3D camera mode where you can literally look around the car live and see right now where the front of the car is if I'm any close to that bank there which I'm not and it's just actually a really impressive and fun thing like my 7 series this car has air suspension except you can configure it yourself you can raise it and I'm going to do that actually raise it a little bit more if we go under 20 miles an hour we can do that and raise the air suspension and we're in comfort mode now which is the softest of settings and quite literally, the only thing you can hear as I'm driving along here at 30 miles an hour is the air conditioning. It is so, so quiet, I cannot begin to explain to you how quiet this car is. In fact, let's take it on the dual carriageway now, get up to 70 miles per hour, and you'll still literally be able to hear nothing. Now, it would be a missed opportunity to get up to 70 miles per hour in a leisurely way, given that I have almost 600 horsepower under my right foot. So I'm gonna quickly scrap the air suspension nonsense, stick it into dynamic mode, and flick the transmission into S, which it is, come to a stop here on this slit road, and that's a dual carriageway in front of me, which means we can go up to 70. So foot on the brake. That's 70. This car is blisteringly quick. Blisteringly quick, in fact, this car will do a standing quarter mile in 11.8 seconds. To put that into perspective, I mean, a Lamborghini Huracan will only do it in just under 11. This is supercar quick. Yet, what I'm gonna do now is stick it in Comfort Plus, pop it back into D as it is, and let's accelerate up to 70 miles an hour here. Turn the air conditioning down somewhat. And all of a sudden, we are in just the most comfortable cocoon you have ever sat in. Unlike my 7 Series, which just has cruise control, this has an adaptive cruise control system, which is something I've learned to really enjoy in recent times with lots of lucky access to press cars like this. And yes, it will use radar to, to guide its way and follow the car in front, which is a super, super nice thing, especially when you're in traffic. So that's something that the extra 95 grand in this case will get you. Um, but in all honesty, it's, it's quite a common feature on most new cars now is, is radar cruise control. Like I say, a really, really nice thing, especially in traffic to be able to have. So as well as the heads up display in front of me, which I really, really enjoy, you have got a fantastic glass cockpit display in front of you here on the main screen. 
There's not as much configurability as I think there could be in this screen, which is a shame. But of course, compared to the 7 Series, which literally has two analog dials and a couple of LCD displays, this is night and day. Really nice on Audi is this sort of map display you can get. You can click view and have obviously your speedo and your time and a few more things there in full view. But if you press view again, you can have that map in full view, which is really nice. You can scroll out all the way to space, which is completely pointless. But for some reason, I absolutely love that. Here we go. Look where that is. That's, uh, yeah, it's cool. The car doesn't corner badly either. For something that is this long and this heavy, it grips so well and has the pull to go with it as well. I, I mean, it, it's stupid. It is really, really stupid how fast this car is and also how well it just grips the road. We've got another slip road here, so we can go back up to 70 miles per hour. That's foot down. And that's 70. It's really, really fast. It's hard to explain. You have to sit here and experience it for yourself. It's absolutely stupid, but I love it. And in comparison to the 7 Series, it's night and day because this thing is so much more powerful and it just puts the power down so well, especially with this gearbox, which is fantastic. The last thing I'll mention as we're turning off this dual carriageway now is the, the wheel design on this car. It is specifically designed for cruising down the motorway because it's got these sort of openings and you can pop your hands here, which is super comfortable for when you're just cruising long distances. I actually took this car camping with my girlfriend a few days ago and we went to the Brecon Beacons in Wales and maybe covered four or 500 miles over the few days or so. And yeah, because I can put my hands here and lean back and let the car do its thing on radar cruise, it really is such a relaxing thing to drive. Although you've got all that power, something that's built like this, so refined, so comfortable, so quiet, and so technologically advanced, you find it just relaxes you. You don't want to go fast. If anything, you want to drive under the speed limit because it is just so good to cruise in. But my 7 Series, although quite ugly, the steering wheel is exactly the same. It's got the openings here and you can put your hands down there like that, which is perfect for a car like this. I'm glad Audi have done it because it's just super comfortable to rest your hands like that and to cruise. So then we're now in the 760 Li and honestly it feels completely completely ancient in comparison to that 2021 S8 and rightly so because it is pretty ancient in here. BMWs around this era, let's say they were pushing the boat out a little bit in terms of iDrive and things like that and unfortunately although at the time disputed but quite technologically advanced, not aged great, not aged great at all. Now, as you can hear, as I click through the gears, definitely the weak point of this car is this very, very cumbersome gearbox. It reminds me actually of when I'm playing with my puppy. I try and call him and he sort of doesn't do anything. He doesn't want to come and you keep calling him, keep calling him and eventually it will happen. It's like when I click the shift button, nothing happens. You keep doing it and eventually it will find the gear. So most of the time, because of that, it just stays in drive. And it does, when you're driving this gently, it does a rel relatively good job of, of masking the gears and does an okay job as a sort of automatic gearbox. It's when you want to sort of have a bit of power straight away, there is a bit of delay before anything really happens. But once things do become underway, they become underway pretty quickly. This car isn't slow, but in comparison to that S8, it's a tractor. I mean, anything in comparison to that S8 is a tractor. The first thing you notice when you drive this next to something like that Audi is the steering feel, uh, well, it's just extremely heavy in comparison. I actually always thought the steering on this car was a bit heavier than I'd like it to be, but when you get out of something like that, which has really light steering, 
this just feels like a tractor. I mean, basically my 7 Series is a tractor. We do have adaptive suspension on this and it is air suspension, but all you can do from here manually is change it between comfort and sport. So there is a softer mode. I'm actually in sports mode at the moment as I guess I hope we can push the car a little bit today. Fuel economy wise, interestingly, I mean, I haven't really tried to have the S8 really economical, and I think you could quite easily get that into the 30s. But this, if you try, you can get 25, 26 MPG quite comfortably out of it. So surprisingly, it's not as bad as you think. A naturally aspirated V12 in an over two ton, five meter car uh, can, can pull mid 20s relatively easy. If you really try, as I did when I drove this from Scotland to London, you can get close to 30, very close to 30. Generally though, you're speaking about an average of 1920. Although if you're using the S8 relatively spiritedly or around town, you're not gonna be getting anything close to 20 in that either. Now the one way in which we can safely say this will trump the Audi is sound. And I've conveniently entered the Hindhead tunnel. So let's crack a window, put it in second gear. It's a symphony of noise. Obviously, this is straight pipe, so there's no contest with the Audi whatsoever, but it just sounds absolutely fabulous, especially in a tunnel. Until that happens and the car sort of misfires, there's something going on with the engine and I need to get it sorted. It's not great. Let's just try second gear once more though. doesn't like it and I've just thrown up a transmission fault so that's not ideal transmission fault drive moderately so really oh dear everything's throwing up now level control system failure well I think in that case you might have to cut the drive in the 7 series a bit short as I'm gonna need to pull this car over now and switch it off annoyingly but that I guess ties it nicely really with the topic of this video in that if you're spending a hundred grand more and getting yourself an Audi S8, a brand new one, you're probably not gonna have issues like this. And the car is like a Christmas tree now with warnings coming up left, right and center. So I do need to pull it over. It seems like the gears are stuck in third or second or whatever I was in there. Yeah, you're not gonna get that with the Audi. And the Audi, you just get in and you go and it works and it's beautiful to drive, it's superbly comfortable, superbly quiet, and it pulls like an like a train. And that's a cliche, but it genuinely does. There's nothing quite like it. But there's a little bit of a demonstration with the 7 Series. We got to hear some of the sound. And as you can see, I'm sweating in here because the air conditioning's terrible. And the whole thing is just so cumbersome in comparison. But yeah, let's uh, limp the car home, hopefully, and I'll speak to you guys in a minute. So then I hope you've all enjoyed this Battle of the Barges episode. Now, clearly, from the driving perspective between the S8 and the 7 Series, it's night and day. It's like British amazing ale with texture and depth and history compared to that cheap American sh that you get on the shelves at Walmart. Anyway, but that's to be expected with this being a 2021 model worth £105,000 compared to my now very dated 2007 7 Series. I want to say a huge thank you, of course, to Audi UK for loaning me this S8 for a week. It's been absolutely fantastic, and to be honest, I don't want to give it back. If there's anything else in the Audi lineup that you guys would like to see, do let me know in the comments below, and I can have a chat with the guys over there and see what we can arrange. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.